how the world works. I always think that somebody has wanted this to work out for me, you know, because Mike and I had gone our separate ways, really still in love with each other, but he was very busy all over the place. I was busy, my family, whatever. He actually came out and, and directed an episode of Brooklyn Bridge, um, and he was in New Zealand doing a movie, and he calls me out of the blue around Christmas time, and he said, uh, are you going to sign this letter in support of this guy, John Pike, who had been our president, the boss at, at Paramount? and had been, I felt, unjustly accused of some racist remarks and had lost his job. And I thought John was a good guy. And Mike was saying, should I sign that letter, you know? And I said, yeah, I think I'm going to sign it, you know? You, yeah, I think you should, because he was down in New Zealand. And he said, all right. And then we talked, this and that. And uh, he said, I'm, uh, by the way, I'm going to come back to te television. I'm doing a television show. I go, what? He goes, yeah, I'm going to do a show in New York next year uh, on ABC at Chelsea Pier, you know? I go, wow, I go, and I was really taken aback. He was going to be back in TV, he hadn't asked me, and I didn't even know about it, you know? And he said, well, I knew you would never move to New York, so I didn't even, you know, mention it to you. And I go, well, yeah, I can't move to New York. Kalen's in school here, and uh, okay. And then by the time the meeting, by the time the phone goes over, I was very happy again for him and wish him good luck really sincerely and, uh, and meant it, you know? But there's always a little thing of, whoa, Mike's going to be on TV and it's not going to be, I'm not going to be working with him, you know? And so that two nights later, we were going out with Katzenberg and Katzenberg, who knows everything that's going on in the universe. I said, I just spoke to Mike. He's going back on TV. Uh, and he goes, not going. The script came in. He didn't like it. Mike had script approval and uh, he's not going to do it. I go, wow. Because I said, because I admit I was a little bit jealous. He goes, why? Do you want to work with Mike? I go, well, who wouldn't, who would pass up a chance to work with Mike? And he goes, but I can't. It's a deal breaker because he's in New York. And I know Diana's there. I go, not, I know Diana's not going to want to, you know. She goes, well, I don't know. That could be fun. <laughs> it's the last thing I expected her to say. And then next thing I know, I'm on the DreamWorks jet going to New York to pitch ideas to Mike uh, for a TV show. Katzenberg has brokered this as only he can. And um, he has told Mike Fox, I have 100 ideas. I have none. I have no idea. I'm boarding this plane without an idea. He told me Mike's dying to work with me again, which he's not. Mike felt two things. One is that, you know, we had worked together as a young, younger. Would I ever see him as the man he's become? And he's to be the co-partner on this, co-executive producer, and really the equal creative partner. And he's, we've never been in that relationship. And am I going to do that? And how's that going to be? Um, but he's, that's not what he's told me. You know, he said, ah, Mike's dying to work with you again, you know? And I thought, I need Bill Lawrence, you know? So I called Bill, I go, Bill, I don't have time to make a deal. Come on, go to New York, get on this plane with me, and on the way we're going to come up with an idea for Mike Fox, and we're going to write a pilot. And he goes, okay. You know, so we're, we're on the plane now. And insanely, Bill Lawrence reading Cosmopolitan magazine, right? And he hands me this magazine, and he said, look at my horoscope. I look at his horoscope, says, you are on a trip to fortune and fame. Great riches await you at your destination. So we were feeling good. You know, we thought Cosmo's on our side. And we work out a couple of different ideas, and we come up with this idea for um, Spin City. You know, we thought, you, you, have, you have Mike Fox, so you have intelligence. You have to start with intelligence and power. And that was a world that hadn't been covered. And we work out, we flesh out a couple of characters, and we go to Mike, and I said to, Mike doesn't know this story, so if he sees this, it'll be the first time. So I said to Bill, the only thing is, let me start the conversation. So I say to Mike, okay, we don't have the whole thing worked out. We have nothing. We're at the Four Seasons Hotel. That's what we have. We have nothing. I go, but here's what it is. You know, it's New York City politics. The city's up in flames. There's a sanitation strike. The bridges, everything, infrastructure's coming. People are screaming at each other. Everyone's been away. You walk in the room, everyone gets quiet because they want to hear what you have to say. So I said, I know actors. And Mike goes, well, yeah, that sounds like, you know, I could be that guy, you know? And that was it. We really didn't have much more. But now we're sitting there with Mike and pitching. And we come up, you know, Mike's so brilliant. And we come up with all these different. And by the end of that little meeting there, we've come up with the whole show. At least the broad strokes of it, you know? And Bill and I go to Vermont. And we write the pilot in four days, you know? And we fax it to Mike. And he says, I love it. You know, he said, Tracy and I are, are, are laughing. We can't stop laughing, you know? Each scene, we get more excited, you know? So... But I said, because this Mike, and I love him and didn't want this, I said, don't sign anything yet. You don't have to agree to anything yet. Let us, let's see what happens. Where he goes, and Katzenberg's going, get him to sign something. Get him to sign something. I go, and he doesn't have to sign anything. 
And I said, and you know what? If the night before he doesn't want to do it, we're not going to do it. So what's the difference? You know, not going into thing with Mike Fox where we somehow, you know, uh, hornswoggled him into this thing, whatever that means. But, you know, Katzenberg was great. I, I love him. And he was, you know, just had put this together. And we had it, um, the one thing I wanted was not to do it for any now. I wanted to do it on spec so I didn't have to take any notes for anybody. And uh, we wrote it. Mike had his input. We made the changes. We presented it to all three networks. They all wanted it, really because of Mike. I mean, nobody wanted to do, um, nobody wanted to do politics. I don't know if anybody wanted to work with me anymore after. There were very few people left who I had got an argument with at some point, but they really wanted to be with Mike, and, uh, and he's the reason there was Spin City. And then we settled on ABC because they gave us the best creative deal, you know, the best license fee, and, um, and we, off we went to New York. And talk about the character of Mike Clarity. Well, it's really based a lot on George Stephanopoulos, you know. Uh, George was very generous in his time with us. We had another consultant at the beginning, a guy named Sid Davidoff, who had worked with Lindsay. And um, what I want, and there was a guy, Kevin McCabe, in uh, the speaker's uh, office in, in uh, City Hall there. What we wanted was a guy, I wanted to do a show where anyone who was in that world knew, okay, these guys know. You know, they got that right. And I had gone, we'd spent some time at City Hall, and I remember saying to Juliet, we met Giuliani, and, uh, and then his assistant, I don't remember the guy's name, but I said, what, what's the biggest mistake we could make? It was interesting. And he said, um, portraying us as, as if we don't care. He said, we can be wrong, you know, we can make mistakes, you could completely disagree with us, we don't, but don't show us as people who don't care. We care, and the, we think these solutions are going to work. So don't, please don't portray us as cynical guys who don't care. We're not. We were talking about the genesis of Spin City and, and, and your dealings with the actual mayor's office there. They were really helpful uh, because we, not only did they allow us to kind of uh, film interiors there and shoot pictures, but also just to get a sense of the complexity of the job and the high energy there, you know. One of the things we want, and so we actually uh, designed a shooting, a shooting style to deal with that, our New York style. You know, Tommy Schlamme was the director and we were, I think, the first to, to build those hallways. And there's also the symbolism of this world down below that's running the world above and the labyrinth of uh, the emotion of being in, in New York City politics. But we filmed, um, you know, we built those uh, hallways and, and it had a huge impact on how, and we had a steady cam as a regular member of our filming crew, which also was unusual. And then when we didn't use, when we weren't using a steady cam, we'd have it on sticks. So we ended up with five cameras at all times, sometimes we go to six, and try to keep that pace up. Uh, Dickie Quinlan, who was our DP, was a New York guy, and he really got it, you know, and, uh, and it, was, it was exciting to film that style. You know, Mike said, I want to do a show where people in the morning say, I can't believe they did that, you know, and I think one of the fears he had about me as a writer is that I wouldn't go there naturally, and I think that's really true, and it was really Bill who who could bring me into the kind of strangest parts of that writing. As an older guy, uh, you know, there were certain things, especially in terms of the relationships with women, you know, where, which was key in, in Mike Flaherty's life. You know, here I am, you know, what was I, 52 at the time, and I, you know, Dan and I had been together, you know, 100 years. I, you know, I, I actually have no memory of, being, of going up to a woman and saying something, you know. Uh, so it was kind of interesting. All these, I had all these young writers. So Mike wanted also to prove himself to a whole new generation of, people, which I thought was really exciting. You know, no free ride, no big deal who I was. I want to do it over in a different way. And we had the idea, we hired 14 writers, 12 of whom had never worked. Yeah. And Bill, at 27, was my most senior trusted aide, you know, and we were sitting in that room there. I had to give them a handkerchief so, you know, if I was talking about something from before they were born, they could throw the flag, you know, go, boss, 15 yards. I was minus 10. You know, I wasn't born yet. No, <laughs> can't help you. Uh, but it was an interesting uh, dynamic, you know, a different relationship and very, very good for me as a writer, very energizing.